Hi, I'm Dr. Messina, president of Dr. Undo Tattoo Incorporated. Today we're going to be doing something a little different. We're going to be discussing 10 complications of laser tattoo removal and some non-laser tattoo removal processes that could be quite dangerous for you. And we're going to not only discuss what happened, why it happened, and what can we do to make it better. Remember to click subscribe and hit the little bell to be notified for more educational videos. First thing I want to discuss, hyperpigmentation. Hyperpigmentation is this darkening that we see around the edges of the tattoo. It occurs because the melanocyte, which releases melanin to the skin, is increase in melanin production in an effort to protect the skin. It's protecting the skin from a repeated trauma. The laser is always focused on the tattoo and maybe a little bit of the surrounding tissue. And because this is a repeated trauma, the melanocytes produce more melanin and make this brown pigmentation around the tattoo. As distressing as it looks, it's very benign and 95% of the time, hyperpigmentation is going to resolve on its own. You don't have to do anything about it. It might take a year, it might take two years, but in general, after we're done traumatizing it and your laser procedure is over, it should get better in time. If it doesn't, and it proves to be a resistant type of hyperpigmentation, then there are several laser options available to lighten up that brown pigmentation. Next up, hypopigmentation. Hypopigmentation is the reverse of hyperpigmentation. In this case, the melanocytes have stopped releasing melanin to an area. Now, if the laser has stunned the melanocytes, that area is just going to lighten up in color. However, if the melanocyte is killed, as in this picture, the area becomes completely devoid of pigmentation. What's very unfortunate about this individual is that this was a Fitzpatrick 6 patient, in other words, a very dark skin tone. And the laser was either set at too high of affluence or energy for the melanocyte to survive. And it killed the melanocytes, causing this whitening of the skin. The other option would be a laser was used that's too well absorbed by the melanocyte, such as a KTP laser or a ruby laser. Those lasers are sure to kill the melanocyte and cause this whitening of the skin. The unfortunate part is in this instance, it's going to be permanent. Sometimes we could get little dots of hypopigmentation around the edges of a tattoo on a lighter skinned individual, and in general, it will resolve in time. However, this tattoo is not going to get any better. There was just too much trauma to the melanocyte. Laser tattoo removal infection. To get an infection after laser tattoo removal is very rare. The reason is the epidermis normally remains intact. However, if the laser energy is set too high and we rip open the epidermis, that opening allows bacteria to enter the epidermis, enter the deeper structures of the skin and cause a cellulitis or an infection. As we see in this foot, the toes look swollen, the whole foot looks swollen. It's red, it's warm, it's tender. The tattoo looks like it's under pressure and swollen. It's breaking open in a few areas as well. This is an infection that's going to start to travel up the leg and it's going to require antibiotics to get it under control. When I first saw this picture, I initially thought that it was granuloma formation as an allergic reaction to a red ink. However, this was a malpractice case. And when I read this patient's deposition, she had said that this was a normal looking tattoo. And immediately upon lasering this tattoo, aside from being extremely painful, the tattoo became blistered and raised immediately and then healed into these large red hypertrophic scars. This should never happen. This occurred due to incompetent laser surgery. And it shows the importance of going to someone who knows what they're doing and using the proper equipment. There is no way that the lasers designed for tattoo removal 
either the Q-switch or the Pico, was used in this situation. This situation required the use of a long pulse laser, something geared more towards vein treatments or laser hair treatments, and it transferred way too much heat into that tattoo, causing immediate burning and scarring. This will not get any better. The treatment for this would most likely be surgical excision and skin grafting, possibly laser resurfacing. However, laser resurfacing on body parts other than the face tends to not give a cosmetic result. Full sleeves present very special issues. You never laser a full sleeve in one session. It has to be broken up. In this picture here, we have the full forearm, the whole circumference, lasered in one session. That not only could cut off the blood supply and nerve supply in something called a compartment syndrome just from the swelling alone, but the transfer of heat was very high in this treatment. And we could see the arm is swollen, it's distended, the tattoo is under pressure, areas of the skin are breaking down. And when this all resolves, my gut feeling is that the skin underneath was probably never going to look normal again. There's going to be areas of hypopigmentation and areas of raised scarring. Granuloma formation. Granuloma formation is an allergic reaction to an ink. Most of the time it's due to a substance in red ink, but it can happen in black ink as well. Granuloma formation occurs due to this allergic reaction where we develop a thickening of the skin with actual hardened nodules in it. It becomes very raised. It does appear almost to be like a keloid scar, but it's not. As we can see, it's usually red ink. We have granuloma formation in this tattoo as well, the foot, in any areas that had red ink. Granuloma formation is very difficult to treat. Usually surgical excision, on occasion, steroid injections into the lesions could soften them, and laser resurfacing. But again, the area below the granulomatous tissue usually never looks normal again. And this is not something that was due to any laser. This was just an allergic reaction to the specific ink. When we see an arm like this with multiple blisters, we have to wonder what was the laser energy used and what laser was used. Some lasers just make blisters. Ruby lasers, for instance, even on low energy, can make blisters. However, that's usually for green or blue ink. This doesn't look like that. This looks like the laser fluence was very high. At first, I thought that only the large areas of the tattoo had blistered up. However, looking at the picture closely, you'll see even fine lines in the tattoo blistered. So I think the fluence was very high in this situation. The problem with this is that when this resolves, we have the risk of hyperpigmentation, we have the risk of scar formation, and as these blisters burst, we have the risk of an infection. So when you see an arm like this, you have to be very careful of your post laser treatment. You have to be very careful to keep it clean and should it burst and have skin exposed to put some kind of a topical antibiotic on it like Neosporin or Bacitracin and to be very careful to make sure it doesn't become infected. The sternum is another area of concern. The sternum or breastbone is an area that for one reason or another is quite prone to scarring especially hypertrophic or keloid scars, as we see in this tattoo. It doesn't even need to be high laser energy to cause that. So it's very important, should you have a tattoo over your sternum, to make sure that you're not using excessive laser energy. When we see something like this, often steroid injections to the tattoo could help resolve it. Some of the less aggressive lasers, the non-ablative lasers might help resolve this scar, but we have to have the understanding that even the treatments might make this sternal area scar even worse. 
So the sternum is an area to be very careful with any type of laser procedure. In this picture, we have severe chemical burns on the arm. Sometimes lasers can burn like this, and it's usually excessive fluids in, in an area that has a lot of ink. It's a common error to think, oh, there's a lot of ink in this area, I have to increase the laser energy, and it's just the reverse. A lot of ink, you lower the laser energy. The other thing could be chemical processes used to take off tattoos. They're usually very aggressive on the skin and can lead to chemical burns. And then finally, we have the catastrophic chemical burn of the chest. This was not done by any laser system. This was done by putting on topical tattoo removal creams that have an acid base. It forms an eschar, which is a thick clump of tissue that falls off after a few days or a week, and it brings out all the ink with it. It also brings out a lot of your epidermis and some of your dermis with it, meaning that it's going to heal as a scar. Whenever you see something like this with this black necrotic tissue, it is going to have a catastrophic outcome. This will never get any better. It's beyond laser resurfacing. Laser resurfacing might make it slightly better, but this area will never look normal again. You have to be very, very careful when using these topical acids. In fact, I don't even recommend it at all. Your safest method is still laser tattoo removal. Whether you choose Q-Swish or Pico, I don't really care. It's just the best method of getting it off with the least amount of side effects and scarring. Something like this, where you had an acid actually erode the tissue, is going to cause this catastrophic outcome, which is going to remain a scar forever. I hope you learned something in this video. I hope you understand a little bit more about the risks and dangers of getting laser tattoo removal and how important it is to choose someone who knows what they're doing. Take care, have a good day, and be safe.